Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to today's episode of ScreenFlow Live. Where are we going? Where are we going? I'll tell you where we're going. Where we are going to be talking about hotkeys, how to use them, ones that I use a lot, ones that I wish I used a lot, and how to customize them for your own work. Uh, because it really is going to up your game as an editor if you get used to using hotkeys. You can do things a lot easier, a lot quicker, and uh, you'll just feel like a... Well, I was going to say something, but I'll say it. You'll just feel like a really cool person. I was going to say a different word, but we'll keep it PG here. So today on this show, uh, hotkeys. So stick around. All about hotkeys today. Hey everyone, hey everyone, I'll just say that multiple times. I'm trying to do some uh, new timing stuff here, so let us know if we were even close on the timing there. But uh, before we get started with the hotkey stuff, like always, we got some announcements to make. I want to let you guys know um, that we always have the ability to let you follow us, whether it's on YouTube, on Twitter, or on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, go ahead and go to facebook.com slash screenflow or at screenflow on Twitter or our YouTube, which is screenflow tube. You can go there and subscribe and sign up and make sure that you can watch us there or on Facebook, anywhere like that. Um, and then we also have the ability to sign up email. You can see, um, hopefully we'll get it up on the screen, telestream.net slash screenflow live. If you go there, you can fill out a form and we will send you a notification anytime we go live we also have a couple things coming up here pretty soon um, we have next week's show which is going to be all about call outs we talked about how to add call outs and how to go deep within the uh, the editing interface in ScreenFlow for call outs but next week we're going to talk about the tactics on how to use different ones and different ways to make it look really good in your ScreenFlow projects and then for those of you who use Wirecast or know what Wirecast is, we did just release Wirecast 8. Actually, Wirecast is what we use to give you the show that you're watching today. Um, this is all being streamed to you live with our Wirecast live streaming software. And we have a uh, webinar on the 26th of September going over all of the new features in Wirecast 8. So if you're interested in streaming, be sure to show up for that. You can learn all about Wirecast. And with that, let's get into it. Hotkeys. Why do we use hotkeys in editing? What's the point? What are my favorite ones? Which ones do I want to use? And then how do we configure the new hotkey configuration settings in ScreenFlow? So let's jump into ScreenFlow here. And I'm going to first show you what is new in ScreenFlow 7 and why these hotkeys why we even talk about how cool it is. So if you want to know what hotkeys are in ScreenFlow or if you want to change any of them, the first thing you want to, oh, check this out. I learned something new here. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. So go up to ScreenFlow and open up Preferences. And in your Preferences tab, we have a new tab here in the middle. We have General, Timeline, Advanced, and your Licenses, which I'm not going to pop open right now. But here you go. We have a new keyboard shortcuts tab and in here you have complete control over what kind of keyboard shortcuts you have and then which ones you can use and if you watch here I can scroll for a long time and these are all different things that we can custom map to make our keyboard shortcuts exactly what we want and each one of these things can have its own keyboard shortcut so before we get into how we change all these this is more of a way of just a um, I guess you could say a resource for figuring out what is possible in ScreenFlow but I want to show you ones that I think are the most important starting with by far the easiest most important ScreenFlow shortcut which some of you might know already and that is using the T key on your keyboard T and once you do that it will split a clip and that is by far the most important keyboard shortcut you will ever use because who doesn't trim their clips when they're editing? 
like, oh, I don't want this part or this part. I just want that part in the middle. Cool, I'll bring it over. And you know, actually, that last two half a second, I don't want that either. So I'll use T to trim off the end. And that is something that I can't, I can't imagine editing without that ability. Um, it's by far the thing that I use the most. So if we're going to do a little list of maybe my top five, number one, the T key to trim. And if you want to know, oh, that's not my mouse. If you want to know exactly how to do that, not to do how to do that, but to see some of that, if you went up to edit and split, it says right here, T. Oh, zoom in on that, huh? Edit, split, T. There you go. And you can see all of these editing things, they already have their own um, hotkeys. And moving on to the second one, which is not necessarily screen flow specific, but this is something I use all the time, Command Z, undo. One thing that I run into on a regular basis is uh, doing voiceovers. Um, and what I'll do is I'll have my voiceover in here. And the way that I like to record voiceovers is I will sit there for 20 minutes and record the whole voiceover in one take. Even when I mess up, I'll be, you know, blah, 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 that wasn't right. Let me just do this whole line over again. And then I can come in and start editing these voiceovers. And something that will happen often is I get a little mixed up. I go, okay, that's where my first one finishes. And then that's where my next one finishes, but I want to delete that. And then I accidentally delete the rest of my 20 minute voiceover. Well, Command Z, just like in any other program on your computer, that's going to undo your last action and that will save you all of that voiceover that you just deleted. So I use a lot of different hotkeys, but by far Command Z for undoing a mistake or, or even just undoing something that I use to test something out and T to split my clips. As you saw there in those two seconds, those are the ones I used. Okay, we're going to move here. Oh, you know what? So I use a lot of these 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 hotkeys as second nature and I don't even realize that's what they are. Spacebar that plays your media. Spacebar pauses it. I use that all the time. I don't even think of it as a hotkey because it's just second nature to me. So I guess my top three, and I'm probably forgetting another one I use all the time as well, is spacebar to start and stop playback of my media in the timeline. T to split my clips and Command Z to undo any erroneous or test actions uh, that I've made in the editing timeline. And those are the ones that I use nonstop on a regular basis. And if you've been here on the show before, you know you can ask questions on YouTube and Twitter, uh, YouTube and Facebook. So I'm gonna go check out to see if there's any questions here. No, there isn't. And, ooh, there's quite a few here, let's see. Uh, call outs, Joe B. Pasquale. Hey, Lucas, if Ty's allowed, can you explain the bubble effect which was posted yesterday? Uh, yes, I will show you how to do that. Shift T to highlight the clip on the right. Ooh, thanks, Lynn. All right, check this out. So here's T, and that will split the clip, and everything to the left of my scrubber was highlighted. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Now, if I do shift T, it, oh, you know, Lynn, you're making me feel like a fool because I don't use this and that would be awesome for me. Uh, but there you go. Now I just delete the stuff that I don't need. So T splits it, shift T splits it and then highlights the clip on the right of the split clip. Um, hopefully I'm not going too fast here for you guys, but these are, these are pretty basic things. So I'm going to create here a running tally of my favorite things. Number one, what? Come on, I want that to be white. Well, let's do this. One, T, to split clips. I'm just gonna make the background here white real fast. What's going on? Add a new text box, solid color. Let's make it black. Oh, it's because I have a built-in animation on. That's why it was looking so weird. All right, so number one, T. And that will split clip. Now I'm just going to do this so we can come back to it at the end. Number two, uh, 
Command Z to undo. Number three, I'm going to say spacebar for play slash pause. Uh, did I talk about any other ones? And then you can do shift T, of course. And those, I think, are just the three that I use on a regular basis. And then there's a couple other ones that I really like as well um, that I'm going to get into here. So let me show you some of the ones that I use not as much, but also very often if I'm doing these types of things. One of them is going to be adding a video action. Of all the actions up here, the, the call-out actions or uh, maybe an annotation or a text box, the one that I use the most by far are video actions to add some sort of video movement. Um, and I can come in here and then I can navigate over to the video tab and then click video action or I can go add video action, which is command K. So while I'm in here, command K, perfect. Let's move this down to the bottom right. And I've now, within seconds, added a video action to my clip. And then if I want to, I can do option command K, and that will add a video snapback action. It's very similar to a video action. Actually, what it does is it takes your original action and just reverses it. So what you can see here is my clip coming down and then back to its original spot. And that was by adding, if we zoom in here, you can see that we have a video action and a video snapback action. Um, might be a little bit tough to read that, but it does say there, video snapback. Um, and that was Command K to add the original action. Of course, I can't use hotkeys to, to move things around in here, but I can just come up and move them with my mouse. And then the video snapback, which is option command K. So I'm going to add that as number four for my most used um, hotkeys. So let's say command K for video action. And number five would be option command K for a snapback action. Um, moving on to the next one that I use on a regular basis. And this is one that I've only recently started using just because of my workflow. When I pull in a video and microphone, I'm using an HD camera through a capture card that ScreenFlow is capturing. But then I'm using a USB microphone simultaneously. And because there is a difference in time for the signal to go through a capture card into my system and a difference in time for the audio signal to come through my microphone through the USB cable, they don't come in synced together. So generally what I have to do is adjust the timing on the audio. So let's see, um, I'm just going to grab a random video and a random audio clip just to just to say, hey, look, imagine this audio was from that video. So what I like to do is zoom in on what I'm working with, maybe make it a little bit bigger here so we can see the audio waveframe, waveform. And then as I'm listening and maybe watching my mouth talk to try and sync all this audio together, I like to click on the audio clip test, the audio portion, and then use the brackets. And watch what happens when I use the brackets. I'm going to zoom in even further here. And the brackets. So when you look at your, your keyboard, you have Q, W, E, R, blah, 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 O, P, and then bracket, bracket, and slash. So those two brackets allow you to move tracks in the timeline frame by frame. So watch what happens when I click it once. See that? Just moves to the left just a little bit. And then just a little bit more. And as I continuously press this, I am now moving that track at the smallest increment possible to move within the ScreenFlow timeline. And we're zooming in pretty far here. So as I go, like this is 29 seconds and here's 28 seconds right here. So it takes a whole bunch of clicks. I would assume 60 because I'm running this in 60 frames per second. 
But I'm, I can now break each second into a 60th of a second when I'm moving things on the timeline. And that helps immensely when I'm working with voiceovers that are out of sync with the video, because now I can go in and move it incrementally and be like, does that look perfect? Well, what about this? What about that? And so using these left and right brackets to, to adjust things incrementally in the timeline is my sixth most used, sixth most used keyboard shortcut. That was kind of difficult for me to say. So bracket, this is what it looks like by the way. Bracket uh, beginning or end to uh, frame by frame. Uh, let's see, frame by frame stepping in layers. I'm not sure the best way to uh, express that in in English here, but frame by frame, stepping in layers. Boop, 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 boop. And now I'm trying to think, is there something else that I use consistently? And, and the, oh yeah, there is. Uh, Shift Z, number seven. And I've actually used this a couple times today without even realizing it, again. Shift Z, focus your timeline. So watch what happens when I do Shift Z. Watch what happens to my timeline. What it's going to do is it's going to take the furthest part of my timeline and bring that into focus. So now if I move these clips here and press Shift Z again, it's going to expand it to incorporate all of the content within my timeline. So when I'm over here and I'm zoomed in as far as I possibly can go, trying to just dial my audio in just perfect, I can just say, okay, Shift Z, boom back at it now i see all of my stuff deborah lee that is spot on i was thinking about that earlier and i forgot deborah lee just told me one more thing which i also use on a regular basis and that is number eight j k l and this is something that you'll learn that you'll learn this is something that you'll hear a lot in uh editor worlds editor speak j k l and actually if you're like watching videos on youtube you can use these controls as well um Watch what happens when I use L. My timeline starts playing. Watch what happens when I hit it again. Now it's playing two times as fast and three times as fast. So L is play. And once it starts playing, if you do it again, it's two times. And if you do it again, it's three times as fast. So essentially it's an incremental speed up. Now J does the same thing, but plays it backwards. And double J makes it play backwards faster and triple J even faster. And then K is pause. So think about old school vcrs you've got k means play or pause J l means play or fast forward and j means rewind i guess you could say and there are some weird things like k means pause but doesn't mean play l means play j means play backwards so spend some time with that but that would i would say these are playback controls yeah, I think those are the ones that I use on a regular basis. It's possible I use other ones without even realizing it, kind of like I realized with uh, the space bar being my play and pause, my main play and pause buttons. But in general, those are the ones that I use. Um, if you guys have ones that you use, please put leave them in as a comment and we can kind of explore the use for them. As for now, I am going to go back and check comments to make sure I'm not too high or too uh, far away from what's going on. What software do we use to live stream this stream? Wirecast, buddy. Would be cool if we could move it with the arrow keys. <sighs> Funny you should ask, Mike. Hang on a second. Um, let's see, Doctari. Okay, Doctari, you, you have the same question more or less that uh, Mike Iron does. And what you can do, and this is the next part of my demo today, is you can customize the hotkeys to do exactly what you want. Like, hey, I use enter to return to the beginning. Let's see if we can make that work. I can't guarantee it right now because I'm not even sure where I'd find that, but let's check it out. Preferences. So as we're here in the preferences menu, we, I come over to the shortcuts tab here in the middle. And now I can come through and figure out. So let's see. I assume we want to do this. Let's let's close. This is if we're thinking about um, 
returning to the beginning. Let's see, global recording, screen flow menu, close that. File menu, it's not gonna be in there. I don't think it's gonna be in the edit menu. Let's see really fast as I go through this. Sorry guys, I'm just reading these really quick to make sure that I'm not missing something. Nope. Mark menu, no. Insert menu, no. Font menu, no. Actions menu, view menu, window menu. Help menu, media catalog, job to media, show duration, zoom in and out. Oh, I guess technically, let, let's close this real fast because technically there is another hotkey, but I don't necessarily call it a hotkey. But when you're in the timeline, you can use your trackpad. And I'm doing this action on my trackpad, two fingers down, spread them apart, and then bring them closer. When I spread them apart, I zoom in. When I bring them closer, I zoom out. And the same goes for the canvas. When I pull them apart, I zoom in and I zoom out. Very similar if you've ever had an iPhone, uh, any sort of zoom actions, you can just zoom in and out on the canvas as well as the timeline by using these motions on your trackpad. If you don't have a trackpad or you use a mouse, use the scroll bar, works the same way. Scroll in and out will zoom in and out on your timeline and your canvas. Okay, sorry, just wanted to point that out there. Let's do, oops, I forgot a period and that makes me really annoyed. Uh, nine, scrolling is zoom. And let's come back here and make it um, a little bit smaller, I think. There we go, just to fit it in, perfect. And I'm gonna use Shift Z to get my timeline back. But now I'm going back up to the preferences and screen flow to see if we can figure this out. During edit, go to start of timeline selection, go to start of timeline. So right now the default shortcut for going to the start of the timeline is command left arrow. Boom, just like that. And you said you wanted it to be, uh, let's see, I think it was over here in YouTube, yeah. Doctari. I use the return key in Logic Pro to return to the start all the time. I need either a single key or hotkey sequence that returns the scrubber to the beginning. I would use it constantly. So first of all, if you want to see where that is, you saw me searching through here and I found it in the hotkey area. But I can also now customize this and change it. Let's see if I want to change this to the return key. Perfect. There we go go to the start of the timeline using return. Let's see if that worked. Let's zoom back out here. Boom. I just changed so that in screen flow, when I hit the return key, my scrubber goes back to the start of the timeline. What happens when we're zoomed way in and we're over here? Boom, brings me all the way back to the start of the timeline. And there wasn't even another keyboard shortcut in ScreenFlow mapped to the return key. If we go back into the ScreenFlow preferences, you can see that there's no things. Like if I changed this to T, which is one of my favorite hotkeys for splitting a clip, I get this little tiny yellow triangle that says, hey dude, slow down, there is a conflict. And it'll show me where the conflict is. So I can come back into my customized area scroll down and change it back to what I want, which is the arrow key. And I get rid of that little thing and we're back in here. Boom, return brings me back to the beginning of the timeline. Um, yeah. There you go, Doctari. Yeah, whatever you want to do. If you want to use the default, you can do that, or you can use one that uh, you make yourself, like the return key. And if I go back to the comments here, oops, that's the wrong button. Now we're just watching me, watching me, watching me. Uh, gosh, I always found it very difficult. There we go. Um... Yeah, and if you want to use arrow keys to move things around, you can do that as well. So let's spend just a little bit more time with how to customize things. So first of all, you have default, my keyboard shortcut set. If you're in the default keyboard shortcut set, it'll show you all of the pre-built shortcuts for ScreenFlow. 
obviously. But if you want to, we can come to configure. Let's delete all of these because I don't actually use any of these right now. So let's add a new one. Duplicate, let's create a set from default and we'll do my screen flow live shortcuts. Okay, so now I've created a new keyboard shortcut template that I can switch between. We've got the default and now we have one that is for me specifically. And I can come in and start doing things. So add a marker, let's do GH, GH. Oh, let's do shift H. How about that? So now I have a new keyboard shortcut for adding a marker. And let's say, you know, I want to save just this frame. Let's do tab D. No, it's not going to work. Let's do control D. How about that? There we go. Now my save frame is control D. And what that means is well back here, I can come and be like, you know, I want this frame right here. Control D. Save untitled. Let's put that on my desktop. Let's call it a test and save it. And now we can come to my desktop, find test, and I just saved that frame by using the new keyboard shortcut that I just made. And so when you're going through and you're making all of these keyboard shortcuts, remember them. Go through, find the things that you want to do. Like there's a lot of things that I bet you didn't even realize that you could put a hotkey to. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's scroll down to my editing, which is generally where I do things the most. Like here, nudge selection backward a single frame. That's the one I was telling you about earlier. Um, you can do it by second if you do shift bracket as opposed to a single frame. You can do it by a second. And then here's the JKL pause. Select your clips after the scrubber. You can uh, v even visit our support page with a hotkey shortcut. Hopefully you don't have to do that so often that you have a hotkey shortcut. But the idea here is that you can come in and give, a, give your own customized hotkey shortcut to whatever you use a lot. And it will make your editing that much quicker, easier, and more succinct because you're now doing things. Instead of coming up to the font window and showing your fonts or changing your video actions, you're doing all these things with little practiced hotkey shortcuts and it will cut down the time of your editing significantly, I guarantee it. Um, all right, let's see. Looks like Lynn's answering some questions there, which is awesome. All right, and Doc says that this one's a bit more complicated. Can I configure a hotkey so that I can switch between the main screen and my iPad input? I don't really know what you're saying there, Doc. I'm sorry. What do you mean switch between them? Like this? Because that's... That's like three fingers up on the trackpad. I go between screen flow and something else. Is that what you mean? That's not a screen flow thing. I'm a little confused. Maybe you can tell me a little bit more of what you're talking about there. But I know that... Um, who was it that wanted... Joe De Pasquale. I'll get to your question in a second because Scott says, how about save frame immediately to media library oh within screen flow you mean huh you may have stumped me on that one dude because I don't know how to do that because I know what you can do is you can you can come in and uh, oh here's another one that I use number ten my ten most used this is Command Shift F Command whoops Command Shift F Freeze Frame baby that's a good one. Um, so let's go into this video here. Command Shift F, pull this up, bring it back over, 
and now I have a freeze frame at that exact moment, but I haven't changed my video. What is that blue line? In and out, how did that happen? I must have pressed something. Odd. And then what you can do is you can, one thing that I've found is, oh yeah, I had that freeze frame, but now I have a, a stop in my video. Check this out. What I like to do is find where I want that freeze frame, Command Shift F, grab that freeze frame, Command C for copying, delete it, and then undo everything. So now I have my original video, but then I can just grab that freeze frame by pasting it. And I'm gonna show you that again because I want really quickly. So let's say I want a freeze frame of this moment right here in my video. I can click on that area, Command Shift F, and that creates a freeze frame, but it inserted it, it inserted it in between the two different parts of my video. And I don't actually want that, I just want that frame saved. So I can highlight it, Command C, which copies it, and then Command Z to get rid of that whole process, and then Command V, which pastes that freeze frame that I just made. So now I have still a full video file, and then my freeze frame. Now that gives you a freeze frame, Scott, that you were talking about. But I don't know how to get it into the media library from here. <sighs> yeah. I think, I think the best way you're going to do that, Scott, is uh, unfortunately adding a uh, save frame keyboard shortcut, saving it to your desktop, and then bringing it into the media library. Um, if your goal is just to get it into your timeline though, don't use save frame, use freeze frame, which is command shift F. And that way you have that freeze frame in your timeline already. There you go. Just like that. All using tons of keyboard shortcuts. Hopefully that helped. Wish I could have answered your question a little bit more succinctly, but it looks like it does it for you, so that, that makes me happy. Um, let's check hotkeys one more time. All right, so I plug my iPad into my MacBook. I use the iPad for drawing with the pencil and then switch back to the live show, then switch back to the iPad. Oh, do you mean... Doc, that might be a little complicated because I'm having issues even understanding your workflow right there using Reflector 2 to work around the problem. Are you doing this live? Or are you recording for use in ScreenFlow? I'm real confused. Anyways, I know that we had another question here from Joe DePasquale. He says, hey Lucas, can you explain how to do the bubble effect which we posted on Twitter? And yes, of course I can. I will show you exactly how to do it now. So the bubble effect, I actually have the, uh, the GIF saved here. And that was this one. So if I throw it up into Google, you can see this is what I'm talking about. So you get this bubble looking effect for your video where it's in a video. So let me show you how to do that real quick. We're going to grab that exact same file, face shot, and we're going to come over here. And we're going to close, not close this. So now we're working with just one single file right here. And the goal of this is we want to zoom in. We have this whole video and we want to zoom in and have a circle around this guy's face as he's talking. And what that is going to be is just one single video action with multiple changes to the file. So I'm going to use Command K to add a video action like we were talking about earlier. And now what I'm gonna do is in this video tab, I'm gonna do a couple things. First, I'm gonna crop. Oh gosh, here's another one that I use all the time that I just like, it's so second nature to me. If I press control, it's a little bit hard to see, but watch this little circle here and this little circle here. When I press control, maybe I can get out of the way. When I press control, those circles turn to little tiny rectangles. And that means that when I'm not pressing control, when I do it, you can see it keeps the whole video 
it keeps the whole video aspect ratio intact. When I press control, now it crops it. So instead of coming over here and cropping, I can just grab the any part of the video, press control, then grab the video and crop it up how I want. So what I want to do is crop up and just get this gentleman's face more or less like this. This is not going to be quite perfect yet. I need to do a couple more things. So once we're there, I'm going to pull it down into the middle. And then over here, I'm going to add a corner round. And what that's going to do is bring the corners in to make it look like a circle. But that looks pretty ovular. I think you can say that. Looks like an oval, right? So let's bring in the sides a little bit to make it look a little bit more like a circle and maybe get a little bit less corner round. There you go. That looks like a pretty good circle, doesn't it? And there you go. If I make this a little bit longer, you can see that that one video action turned my video into a circle. It was that easy. So there you go, Joe. Maybe I want to put it up in the top right corner. Because now I'm talking and now I got, you know, ooh, I've got this underneath it. How do you like that? Huh? Look at this. That's just, this is called serendipity. So now I'm teaching you how to play, and now I'm going to show you the overhead of what I'm cooking. Woohoo! Just like that. And you got this nice little thing. You know what actually might be really nice as well? Is to add a drop shadow to this. So it kind of floats my guy up and over the video that I'm doing. There we go. I kind of like it like that. Here we go. And now you can see him floating on top. So that's how you make that little tiny circle thing. One video action that has a crop, a corner round, a physical movement, and a drop shadow. There you go, Joe. All right, everyone. Let's see. So I have a camera. One, one, one last try here. I have a permanent studio for training videos, but I need to switch between iPad input and my main video input constantly. Right now, I need to stop recording and manually switch inputs. So I have a camera input. My iPad is not. So you can't just. Sorry, Doc. You can't just record both at the same time. Or maybe get. Oh, I see. Can you only plug one thing into your computer at a time? Is that what you're saying? Because when you're when you're configuring recording for ScreenFlow, you can record your video from your camera. And if I had my iOS device, I could I could record that simultaneously, and I'd get both recordings into ScreenFlow at the same time. If you're running into an input problem, highly recommend just getting something like this. You know, a little dongle that allows you to have multiple inputs into your computer. Um, from what I understand, it's not necessarily a ScreenFlow thing, but more of a hardware thing that you're running into because ScreenFlow absolutely has the ability to record both your video camera and your iOS device at the same time. <laughs> this is how it gets really tricky talking. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> Must be another issue. Well, Doc, it, it sounds like something that you might need to contact our support team. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're much more qualified to answer these kind of questions than I am on the middle of a live show, especially because I think I'm going to call it right here. So see if you can uh, submit a ticket. Um, someone on our support team will be able to help you kind of get to the root of what the issue is because I'm not fully understanding right now. Um, so hopefully they can give you a little bit more insight. But for now, everyone, thank you so much for your questions. I am going to call the show today. That is hotkeys. Make sure you start using them. Maybe I'll show you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, one last time, my top favorite hotkeys. Deborah, if you want to pull that up. Um, and we will have splitting clips, undo, uh, play, pause, video action, snapback actions, frame by frame stepping in your layers, focusing in on your timeline, playback controls, zoom, freeze frame, the classic uh, command C and command V for copy paste, and uh, you know just a whole bunch of other awesome things that you can do while you're um, editing in ScreenFlow. And, and even when you're not editing, I mean, there's hotkeys for starting a recording. Command Shift 2. Boom, preparing to record, just like that. Um, stop recording, same thing, Command Shift 2. Don't actually want that, but there you go. You can do things outside of the editing process as well. 
Um, but yeah, that is it for today. Just a reminder, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, all those great places. You can sign up for, uh, there you go, ScreenFlow at ScreenFlow on Twitter, slash ScreenFlow on Facebook, and ScreenFlowTube on YouTube, where we do host all of these if you don't have time to watch them on Wednesday afternoon. Um, and then if you want to join our mailing list, telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. That's where you can sign up for um, reminders that we're going live. And then, of course, next week, we've got a deep dive into callouts. Uh, we have talked about callouts once before, but I'm going to show you ways that I use callouts. And maybe you guys can show me ways that you use callouts that I've never actually seen before. And we'll get deep into some of the intricacies. There's some things that you'll run into with callouts. If you do certain, certain layouts of your callouts, we'll act, make them act strange so I can go deep into how to get around those if they are plaguing your broadcasts. It's not your broadcasts, it's your screencasts. So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week and hopefully I answered all your questions. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon.